else and do Yeah, then, um, Professor von Walden has wanted to um, say some words also. Uh, oh, yes, uh, please, uh, while uh, 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 everyone. No, is, but uh, I can not see him. I can see him now. Uh, he will orient, uh, re enter the session. Yeah. Oui. Well, Maria, uh, you are welcome to uh, uh, say any comment. Well, Uh, Maria, uh, you wanted uh, uh, to tell us uh, a little bit more. Uh, yes? Mm. No? If, if there are some questions. Ah. So, uh, ah, she, uh, she, uh, she, uh, she, she, here I see Professor von Walden first. He, he came here. Mm -hmm. Please. So. Yes, please. Mm -hmm. If there are some questions for uh, Rupert van Weiden, he is here, he is present. So, uh, if uh, there is no more questions, uh, uh, I uh, pass uh, the word to uh, Lubomir Denkin to present the report entitled Intelligent Real-Time Control of Electrical Vehicles Wheel. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Great, let me share my screen. Now, can you see this, the slides? Uh, yes, so we see. Perfect. So, um, my name is Lubomir Demkiv and I am a professor at uh, Lviv Polytechnic National uh, University. So let us switch from the uh, important topic uh, about languages to something more uh, material like cars, vehicles and uh, control. So I'm, um, I want to speak about real-time control of uh, electrical vehicles. And this uh, uh, project that I'm going to talk about was uh, done in the framework of NATO Science for Peace multi-year project, uh, which was called uh, Agile, um, uh, Agile tire, tire Control of uh, the Wheel in a Syria Environment. So uh, it was uh, um, delivered by uh, four uh, universities, in, uh, including Lviv Polytechnic National University, Coventry University, Georgia Tech, and uh, University of uh, Alabama and uh, Birmingham. So all the results that I'm going to present were obtained uh, by uh, myself and my colleagues from all these uh, institutions. So first of all, some basic uh, definitions. Um, uh, the uh, uh, object that we investigated is an open link locomotion module. And when I'm talking about an open link locomotion module, I mean the wheel suspension and the motor, which is uh, attached to it and, and the battery, of course. So if you are thinking about the um, vehicle that you are using uh, every day, so uh, you can see that it has four, four wheels and uh, some Tri uh, line uh, system which is connected to it but uh, for now we decided to focus our research on uh, one wheel itself with uh, the further possibility to extend the results to uh, the whole vehicle in the introducing their uh, interconnection uh, uh, through the uh, driveline system. 
So uh, the things that we uh, had in mind while starting the research was the fact that uh, when you press the uh, gas uh, pedal in your car, the motion doesn't start at once. As you can see on these images, the motion starts from the uh, tire, uh, it, uh, it uh, squeezes, and then uh, the motion starts at the drive wheel, and only after that the motion uh, goes to the uh, Dri uh, driven wheel uh, and after that the whole car uh, starts to motion. So we are talking about like some microseconds uh, when the car uh, starts moving but still this is um, uh, an important uh, um, situation to uh, reduce the uh, tire slippage and it might be um, very um, important in the cases when you want to do some uh, rapid m maneuver having a s significant speed or uh, some parts of uh, your car are uh, on the ice while the other are on the asphalt and you want to uh, do that or this kind of uh, maneuver. On the plot here uh, you can see that the uh, red line is our uh, reference uh, or target uh, velocity. The blue line refers to the speed of the uh, drive wheel and the green line uh, refers to the speed of the driven wheel. As you can see, the uh, wheel speed are uh, different, which means that we have a tire uh, slippage. And uh, the vehicle has to react to this uh, uh, tire slippage. And uh, so, uh, and before I continue, I want to introduce the definition of slippage. So it's, it's basically the difference between the theoretical uh, velocity of the wheel and the real velocity of the wheel. So uh, in uh, ideal condition, these two velocities are the same. But if you are thinking about the motion on the car of the wheel, and you, 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 what you can see on these plots, uh, the uh, t uh, the wheel slips. So uh, even if you pull the gas pedal and you expect that the car will uh, start motion uh, at once, this is not what happens because as I said, the tire uh, de uh, deflects and it can start spinning while the, the car is uh, in the same place. So the um, modern traction con uh, control system, uh, of course, uh, do uh, response to this effect. And uh, this uh, response time is about 100 to 120 milliseconds, which might be crucial uh, when you're going at high speed and some uh, uh, inter intersection uh, with lots of cars. And uh, if uh, some uh, undesired situation occurred. So uh, what we have done, we uh, used uh, some si simulators to simulate the behavior of the uh, tire of the vehicle, for instance, MF tire, Adams tire, uh, and others. And we uh, wanted to uh, measure uh, the um, reflection time uh, of the tire. Uh, so uh, because as I uh, said, Previously, the motion starts from the tire, and when the uh, terrain and uh, wheel terrain uh, condition change, for instance, you switch from uh, uh, um, asphalt to ice, uh, the first uh, uh, item in the car that reacts to this is, is the tire. So, uh, if we measure the uh, reaction of the tire to the change in wheel terrain condition, uh, we can uh, calculate the um, uh, time frame within which the control output should be produced in order to uh, uh, um, ensure that the uh, vehicle's reaction to this uh, condition change is uh, fast enough. So uh, uh, from the uh, uh, simulations that we have done in this uh, um, software tools, uh, we obtained that the longitudinal uh, re uh, relaxation time uh, uh, is from 40 to 60 milliseconds. So this is the time uh, during which the tire reacts to the change of the conditions. And we had also uh, corresponding test on the tire rig in the National uh, Tire Research Center at uh, Virginia Tech University in uh, U USA. So they concluded our uh, theoretical uh, findings. Uh, then if you want to uh, 
and, and, and so the ultimate, uh, ultimate goal uh, is to be able to control the uh, electrical motor. And we, are, we are talking here about the electrical vehicle. So we want to control the electrical motor in order to be able to react to this uh, change in uh, wheel tire, in um, uh, terrain tire interaction. So we need a model. Uh, when we are, start, when we are thinking about the uh, open link locomotion, locomotion models, there are uh, two uh, parts that uh, have to be taken into account. The first one is the mechanical part. And when you write the equations for this part, you are talking about uh, tire deflection force, rotational uh, dynamic uh, equivalent uh, inertia, normal action, and so on and so forth. Corresponding uh, equations are here on this slide. So we uh, think the forces uh, in this uh, mechanical part are um, applied to different points. We reduce uh, uh, the entire system to a single wheel, uh, but when by reducing, I mean that we um, uh, projected all the, the forces to one point which uh, was chosen by the wheel. So all the mechanical part was uh, taken into account, no, uh, simplica no uh, significant sim simplifications were done. The next part is, of course, the electrical uh, motor, and that uh, uh, is that was used for uh, controlling the um, electrical vehicle. So, and though there is a great variety of uh, the motors that are used, including AC and DC, with different uh, kinds of them. So, we used uh, a DC motor, and. Um, uh, and uh, the characteristic of the motor were taken uh, from the uh, reasoning that it should uh, uh, provide the uh, fast enough uh, response to the uh, reaction from the mechanical uh, part of uh, the car. So at the end of the day, we came to the following uh, diagram. So we have a battery. Uh, which supplies uh, power to uh, the motor, which in turn uh, rotates the uh, gears in the gearbox, they, uh, and then uh, they rotate the wheel, which in turn uh, interacts with the t uh, terrain, and this uh, action of the terrain on the wheel goes uh, uh, forward. Of course, there are uh, some power losses in uh, the, each of this part and uh, they are taken into account. Additionally, uh, we took into account the uh, suspension part of the vehicle because it is also a significant uh, place of power, of power losses. And, uh, but on the other hand, the, it um, ensures that the motion of the wheel is stable enough. So uh, the goal, as I said, was to create a, a real-time controller that could uh, um, generate the output in the, within the uh, tire relaxation time. Additionally, we uh, synthesized a state uh, observer which could uh, uh, calculate the output of the virtual sensors. And by saying virtual sensors, I mean the sensors that are uh, not uh, mounted uh, into the car from technical or economical reasons. For instance, it is just impossible to uh, install the uh, sensor for uh, the um, normal reaction of uh, the wheel. And uh, it, uh, the um, sensor for the uh, uh, shaft uh, torque, its price is about one hundred and fifty thousand dollars, which is uh, which might be good for a research, but I guess you don't want to have it in your car because it will increase the price, but by this uh, amount. Uh, so to have this, we uh, the the. But, uh, basically, what what I said uh, is um, displayed on this. Uh, diagram, we have a, a control and uh, ob observation system. We have a stochastic model of the terrain, which acts on the model of the locomotion module. Uh, and in turn, we have sensors that can measure uh, some uh, values and some cannot be measured. Then we have an observer, which outputs the uh, signal together with the sensors that are uh, then consumed by the intelligent uh, control system. Additionally, uh, our colleagues from the University of Alabama at Birmingham uh, thought about the uh, encoder uh, that uh, would produce us uh, the close to analog uh, output signal and thus uh, uh, enhancing the encoder uh, re readings and providing uh, uh, 
uh, and uh, enabling the more uh, optimized uh, uh, control of the whole system. Uh, now uh, let's get back to the uh, observers. So we split basically the dynamics of the vehicle in two parts. Uh, the first one is the rotational part, where, uh, which uh, makes the wheel uh, ro rotate. And the uh, second part is the normal uh, dynamics of the vehicle, which uh, is just, uh, responsible for the um, uh, basically vertical mo motion of the wheel uh, enabled by the uh, suspension part. We had some sensors, we took into account the disturbances that may act on the system. And uh, though uh, we um, took them into account separately, but of course they, in the real system, they in, uh, interact between each other. And this was also uh, taken into account uh, uh, having the estimated normal uh, reaction from the normal uh, dynamics part. Now, uh, we uh, compared the uh, couple of methods uh, which are uh, most up to date uh, and we calculate the uh, uh, row mean square error and for, the, for those for this method, so it was uh, extended Kalman filter, unscented Kalman filter, particle filter, and Lewenberg observer. The results of, the, and, and this was done both for the uh, uh, elastic uh, to elastic shock, uh, sh uh, shock torque and wheel normal reaction. So the results of this uh, um, computation showed that the particle filter is the most promising uh, method. And uh, moreover, we uh, during this research we uh, introduced some improvements to this method to uh, even increase uh, its uh, performance. Now, the, uh, uh, after we have all the uh, readings from the sensors and virtual sensor, it comes to a, a control part. So we thought about intelligent controller. Uh, first of all, um, uh, we um, wanted to have the controller that is able to produce the smooth uh, output, uh, taking into account them, uh, the uh, multiple conditions that are uh, are affecting the uh, vehicle motion. Among them, uh, there is um, uh, input for either from the driver uh, or uh, from the uh, control system of the uh, upper level. If you are talking, if you are talking about uh, about the autonomous vehicle. Uh, additionally, we took part. Uh, we took into account the uh, road. Uh, condition in which the robot moves. And um, so we uh, considered uh, asphalt, meadow, uh, soil, and snow road. Uh, so what we did, we just uh, having this uh, fuzzy corrector, we um, modified the input signal pro provided by the driver with, with respect of the terrain uh, condition and uh, using the uh, fuzzy uh, logic. Uh, this produced uh, more smooth uh, output. Uh, here you can see on the left upper slide in comparison with the red line, which was the ramp uh, input uh, that was uh, assumed uh, as a driver input. So uh, we uh, get, uh, we expected to have the uh, lesser tire slippage and you can see it on the uh, right uh, bottom slide. And so with um, uh, so if the slippage is higher, this, that means that we have a greater power losses uh, when the wheel uh, starts ro uh, rotating. But uh, as you can see, the green part is uh, significantly less, and uh, which means that, that, that the tire slippage is less and the vehicle mobility increases. However, we also received the uh, interesting findings that uh, um, current in the motor current also uh, decreases, which you can see on the right upper slide. The green line is the smooth input, so uh, the uh, vehicle consumes less power, which means that uh, it can go. Uh, it can um, uh, the the time between uh, refueling uh, might um, will be bigger, and uh, of course. The, um, uh, and, uh, another in in interesting finding was that despite we decreased the uh, input, uh, the, um, we, we make the input signal smoother, the uh, time uh, when uh, the wheels uh, in both cases achieved the maximum desired angular velocity was uh, the same as you can see on the left uh, bottom slide. 
additionally, we uh, considered a fuzzy controller. So it was a fuzzy corrector of the input signal. Now we considered a fuzzy controller as a main algorithm to control the uh, vehicle as it uh, generates the, uh, as I said, smooth output signal. And this is the uh, most, uh, uh, in, this is very good for the mechanical part of the system, in, in, including the motor. However, we consider the unstable uh, controller, which means that it has uh, several uh, roots in the uh, right-hand side of the S-plane. And, and uh, however, the, uh, the, uh, due to the fact that we are using the fuzzy logic, the overall system is not unstable uh, because uh, changing the uh, value of the membership function, we uh, shift this unstable roots from the right-hand side to the left-hand side as uh, the condition in which the vehicle uh, um, performs changes. Here on the left plot, you can see the uh, hot dog graph of this uh, roots. So uh, uh, at, the, at the beginning, the roots can be in the right-hand part, and then slowly there, um, with the change of the membership, membership function, they move to the left-hand side, and the system at the end of the day is uh, stable. So we considered the several uh, hot dog graph, uh, so basically the trajectories of these routes and uh, comparing them on the right hand on the right slide it appeared that the convex uh, trajectory um, provides uh, the most uh, the, uh, provides better per performance since, since the um, time uh, um, by which the normalized uh, wheel angular, uh, angular uh, velocity reaches its desired uh, value is uh, minimal. Um, uh, however, uh, there's a room for further improvement. So we introduced uh, reinforcement learning to be able to change the values of um, this membership uh, function in uh, real time. So uh, we used uh, Q-learning here to uh, algorithm and uh, having the feedback from the open link lo uh, lo locomotion module, uh, we uh, in real time uh, modified the values of uh, mem membership uh, function. And uh, this is the uh, output of the controller. You can see the comparison uh, with some conventional uh, controllers, like from uh, classic control se theory, uh, binomial uh, and uh, Bessel, uh, Q5 is a pure reinforcement learning. So we try to use reinforcement learning uh, directly to control the, the motor and it appeared uh, the, it appears that we are able to do that. As you can see, the blue line uh, st stabilizes at the end of the day, but still, if you combine both reinforcement learning and fuzzy logic, uh, the result is achieved uh, much faster. And even uh, this, uh, um, uh, is, uh, is, uh, this, this, this fact uh, is still uh, valid, even when the, uh, it is a drastic T uh, terrain change. So if you are m moving from the asphalt to the uh, snow, still the controller is able to handle this uh, si uh, situation and the motion of the vehicle is uh, as expected. Now, uh, we uh, thought about some uh, cost function that uh, we might use to generate the, uh, to start talking about the optimality of our controller. And uh, then we took into account, uh, so we considered the fact, um, that we considered the case of a vehicle starting from uh, the uh, accelerating from zero to 40 uh, miles per hour. And uh, we calculated the time required for this uh, acceleration, taking into account the wheel mobility index, which uh, the, um, basically is the index for uh, how easy it is for vehicle to uh, uh, mobilize uh, itself. And uh, this uh, red line is uh, uh, basically the uh, work which was done by the uh, wheel slippage. So it, it, it is the effect of wheel slippage. And you can see that there is an acceleration per, uh, performance zone uh, when uh, we uh, accelerate rapidly, but uh, 
uh, the energy losses are significant and there is an en uh, energy efficiency zone where uh, uh, the power consumption is optimal. However, the acceleration uh, time is uh, significant, which means the uh, vehicle acceleration uh, is uh, low. And we did uh, also uh, this uh, comparison on different kinds of terrains. Here you can see it on asphalt and on meadow. So we find the uh, trade-off between them and it appears that when wheel uh, mobility index is about 30 per, uh, percent, we have the uh, optimal trade-off between en en energy efficiency and acceleration. And this can be used uh, as uh, uh, our target cost function in the future research. Now coming to the conclusion. So uh, what we uh, what are the outcomes of this project? First of all, and this is very important, we um, established the uh, time framework or uh, real time factor for the calculations uh, that are to be done. So it is 40 to 60 milliseconds. Uh, additionally, we implemented a controller and observers that are able to act within this uh, time frame. And uh, also, the, there is also time left for the sensors to read the data. And we did the corresponding um, uh, tests on the uh, tire National uh, Tire uh, Research Center that prove our uh, theoretical uh, findings. Uh, we also introduced uh, the novel uh, wheel uh, rotation kinematic sen uh, sensor, which acts as a wheel encoder. And uh, we introduced AI based, based algorithms for controller and observer that uh, act in uh, real uh, time, providing us with agile uh, control of the uh, wheel. That's all from my side. Thank you. Do you have any questions, maybe? Thank you very much. So, please. You're welcome to ask. I want to. I want to, to yes, have yes. a question. One, only one question. Our conference is uh, on computer linguistics and inter intelligent systems. And how do you think? Uh, why do you think that your uh, system is intelligent? Uh, well, first, yes, it uh, yes. depends. But on only. Uh, but uh, very short. Yes, I see yes. that I am doctor of technical science, and yep. it, 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 your report is uh, uh, very nice for me. Uh, but uh, the theme of our conference, and I want you say, uh, why do you think that your system is intelligent? Yeah, it uh, basically uh, depends on what, uh, when you're talking about intelligence or uh, from what perspective I was thinking about that. If you are talking about the human in, uh, in, uh, intelligence, is it is uh, one topic. But if you are talking about the artificial intelligence, including uh, the methods like uh, uh, computer vision, reinforcement learning, natural um, uh, language processing, or uh, uh, neural networks, uh, additionally algorithms like fuzzy logic. You are talking about artificial fuzzy logic, uh, fuzzy controller. Yes, so use, yes, yes, I yes. see. So we, Thank so you very fuzzy much. Fuzzy logic. We use reinforcement learning, which are from uh -huh. there, uh, and yeah. Knowledge-oriented uh, storage. No. Exactly. Exactly. Thank you very much. It was very uh -huh. interesting, uh -huh. but yeah, we have no. Uh, time. So we have uh, Thank you. Uh, not uh, much time and uh, mm -hmm. would like to listen to final report for the plenary session. Uh, intelligent uh, system for epidemic situation monitoring and control by Dmitro Chumachenko and Sergei Yakovlev. Hello dear colleagues, can you see my screen? Uh, yes, we can. Okay, so thank you uh, for the opportunity to discuss uh, our results uh, about simulation of epidemics, uh, the hot topic. Uh, today, uh, my name is Matro Chumachenko. Uh, I represent National Aerospace University, uh, Kharkiv Aviation Institute. Uh, so, uh, on December 31st, 2019, the Chinese government uh, first reported the emergence of a new pathogen, the coronavirus. Uh, later called COVID-19. On January 30th, uh, uh, WHO declared the outbreak of a new coronavirus as a public health emergency of international concern. The virus was uh, um, 
rather contagious. According to some research, the basic reproductive number uh, was uh, 2.2, and some scientists uh, estimated uh, uh, that number to be between uh, 2.76 uh, to 3.25. That means uh, that uh, one person can infect uh, from two to four uh, susceptible individuals. Despite the fact that the mortality rate of coronavirus disease is lower than uh, of uh, SARS and MERS, uh, uh, by today the disease has claimed the lives uh, uh, of more than uh, 300,000 people and about 3 million people in the whole world uh, have been infected. Uh, all forecasting models uh, have different initial assumptions and uh, use historical data differently. Uh, models based on uh, well-grounded theoretical understanding and uh, available evidence uh, are critical to formulating uh, viable uh, observational policies, uh, but shifts uh, in distribution can lead to systematic false predictions. Uh, Ukraine became involved uh, in the current COVID-19 pandemic later than other countries outside of China. Uh, the first confirmed case was uh, reported on, the, on March uh, the 3rd, 2020. Uh, with a man who was returned from uh, Italy on February 26. Uh, the first death was reported uh, on March uh, 13th with a woman who returned from Poland. And on March uh, 24th, 2020, the number of cases exceeded 100 and on April, uh, the third, uh, 1,000. Uh, the uh, peculiarity of the outbreak in Ukraine uh, was that after the announcement of lockdown in many European countries, uh, primarily Italy. Citizens who in large uh, uh, numbers uh, were employed in uh, Italy, Poland and other European countries began uh, uh, returning to Ukraine. This way, a uh, flood of potential sources of infection poured uh, into Ukraine from countries where the epidemic was already raging. Uh, so we see that the organizational system and uh, in particular the systems of anti-epidemic protection of the population in different countries were unable to counteract the explosive spread of uh, COVID-19 virus, which led to a high mortality rate of uh, certain categories of infected people, as well as to wide range of long-term negative consequences of inadequate measure management decisions, such as uh, unjustified uh, restrictions of civil rights, uh, deterioration of uh, the national and global economies, narrowing uh, of the labor market, uh, decline in the quality of education, increased violence in family, negative impact of isolation, and uh, quarantine measures uh, on the mental state and the mental health uh, of the population, and so on. So the, the uh, research aims to develop an universal intelligence system for simulation infectious morbidity in a given territory. Uh, and uh, in the modern period of human development, there are uh, constant social changes in society that uh, the evolution of the epidemic process, and which should be taken into account when uh, carrying out measures uh, aimed at uh, curbing the spread of infections uh, among the population. Uh, the direct driving forces of the epidemic uh, process uh, are the source of infections and transmission mechanism and the susceptible human body, which create a chain of uh, uh, successive. Uh, without these links, uh, the existence of the epidemic process is impossible. And the biological hazard of the population is determined by the possibility of the emergence uh, and spread of biological agents that are pathogenic of humans. At the same time, the process of spreading pathogens in space and time, uh, uh, the distribution of cases among various groups uh, of the population and the dependence of these events uh, on various phenomena and processes uh, occurring in nature and society are important. Therefore, no less significant are the secondary driving forces of the epidemic process. Social and natural factors that uh, affect the intensity and manifestation of uh, epidemic process slowing down the accelerating its uh, development. Uh, the main tasks of practical epidemiology are to assess the existing epidemic situation, identify casual relationships due to which uh, it was developed, and analyze risk factors. Uh, that is factors uh, whose action on the epidemic situation determine the likelihood of its complication. In order to rationally control the epidemic process, one should take into account the direction of uh, evolution of the epidemic process and evaluate the most influential uh, factors 
affecting the incidence um, of the population. Each state uh, may have its own characteristics of the spread of infectious disease, which differ from other countries, which is associated with uh, the characteristics of the social, economic, ecological, religious, uh, cultural, and other conditions of the population's uh, existence. Uh, the basis for the prevention uh, of infectious diseases uh, on a national scale is an incidence, uh, is a, a sorry, increase uh, in the material well being of uh, the population, uh, the provision of uh, quality water and food, quality housing, qualified medical care uh, uh, available, and so on. To prevent the intensification of the epidemic process of infectious diseases, it's necessary to determine the driving forces. Uh, characteristics of a certain time and a certain territory. Uh, so the real uh, epidemic differs significantly from the idealized models, uh, which we analyzed uh, in detail uh, in uh, our research. Uh, so I will uh, stop on some notable differences. Uh, at the beginning of the epidemic, uh, the number of infectious diseases uh, is small and the model is uh, determined which assumes uh, the presence of a sufficient number of infectious diseases for homogeneous mixing uh, is inappropriate. Uh, when it becomes clear that uh, an epidemic has started, people are likely to change their behavior, avoiding crowds to reduce their contact, and being more careful about hygiene to reduce the risk of infection. If outbreak vaccine is uh, available, Public health measures will include vaccination of a subset of the population. Uh, various vaccination strategies are possible, including vaccinating health workers and others uh, responsible for a first line epidemic. Vaccinating uh, um, members of the population who have been in contact with uh, diagnosed uh, infectious agents, or vaccinating members of the population living in close proximity uh, to diagnosed infectious agents. Uh, diagnosed infectious uh, agents can be hospitalized both for treatment and for isolation uh, from the rest of the population. Uh, contact tracing with diagnosed uh, infectious diseases can identify people at risk of infection uh, who can be quarantined, uh, uh, must stay at home and avoid contact. And monitored uh, uh, so they can be quarantined immediately uh, if and when they become infected. Uh, for some diseases, exposed members uh, that have uh, not yet developed symptoms may already be infectious. This requires uh, inclusion in the model of uh, new infections caused by uh, contacts between susceptible and uh, asymptomatic uh, infections uh, with those uh, exposed to the class. Uh, isolation may be imperfect. And uh, mesosomal transmission uh, uh, constitutes a serious uh, risk of disease. Uh, so taking into account uh, the identified features and limitations, uh, we developed a multi-agent uh, model, which is a set of agents with the following architectures. Uh, here, SHM of PI is a schema of uh, the agents that uh, originate the internal structure. And MI is uh, the agent's method, which uh, is the origin of the behavior. Uh, the set of agents uh, uh, states is uh, predefined and uh, is constant. Uh, the use of such set of uh, states is based on the idea of dividing the entire population into subsets or compartments uh, based on their states according to the epidemic characteristics. Uh, as uh, we know from classical uh, models uh, of SIR types. So the proposed uh, set characterizes the model as an analog of that uh, classical model, but uh, extend and, and uh, using uh, uh, agent-based uh, approach. Uh, so uh, the slide shows the transitions between the states uh, of agents. Here we can see susceptible is agents um, uh, who are healthy, so maybe susceptible to infection. In this case, health means uh, an agent that is susceptible to the disease of uh, simulated epidemic process. Both uh, the agent is already ill, uh, but without external manifestations. Uh, during this time, um, the agent don't know whether he is sick, uh, but already has a chance of uh, transmitting the infection. Infected 
uh, the agent is sick and uh, agents in these conditions uh, are the most likely source of infection.